community? What community? Stay tuned. My name is Z Matthew, and welcome to Animated Christians, which are for you who like original movies, series, as well as clean anime and manga reviews. Now, I'm not saying that all pastors or all churches are like this. I'm just trying to get rid of the mindset that we created the church to be. I hear in church all the time that we are family and we're a community. But is the church really a community? Let's look at a definition of community. A feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing attitudes, interests, and goals. Now, does the church share your goals for a church? Does it share your interest in learning about God? Is everyone fellowshipping with others? I see none of this except maybe a few here and there. But for the most part, the church feels distant even from its own community that it's built on. So how can the church call itself a family if you have very little interaction with it? You see, Jesus said we are the body of Christ. But why is the pastor the head? I thought God was the head. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31 says, just as a body is one whole, made up of many different parts and all the different parts comprise the one body so it is with the anointed one we were all ceremonially washed through baptism together into one body by one spirit no matter our heritage jew or greek inside or outsider no matter our status oppressed or free we were all given the one spirit to drink here's what i mean the body is not made of one large part but of many different parts would it seem right for the foot to cry, I am not a hand, so I couldn't be part of the body? Even if it did, it wouldn't be any less joined to the body. And what about an ear? If an ear started to whine, I am not an eye, I shouldn't be attached to this body. In all its pouting, it is still part of the body. Imagine the entire body as an eye. How would a giant eye be able to hear? And if the entire body were an ear, how would an ear be able to smell? This is where God comes in. God has meticulously put this body together. He placed each part in the exact place to perform the exact function he wanted. If all members were a single part, where would the body be? So now, many members function within the one body. The eye cannot wail at the hand, I have no need for you, nor could the head bellow at the feet? Members who seem to have the weaker functions are necessary to keep the body moving. The body parts that seem less important we treat as some of the most valuable. And those unfit, untamed, unpresentable members we treat with an even greater modesty. That's something the most presentable members don't need. But God designed the body in such a way that greater significance is given to the seemingly insignificant part. That way, there should be no division in the body. Instead, all the parts mutually depend on and care for one another. If one part is suffering, then all members suffer alongside it. If one member is honored, then all the members celebrate alongside it. You are the body of the anointed the liberating king. Each and every one of you is a vital part. God has appointed gifts in the assembly. First missionaries, second prophets, third teachers, then miracle workers, healers, 
helpers, administrators, and then those who speak with various unknown languages. Are all members gifted as a missionaries? Are all gifted with prophetic utterance? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Or are all gifted in healing arts? Do all speak or interpret unknown languages? Of course not. Pursue the greater gifts and let me tell you of a more excellent way, love. You see, churches are looking at this scripture wrong. It's not about ministry. It's not about the volunteer you do. It's not about the mission trip you do that makes up the body of Christ or even the service. It is about the interaction of everyone within the church learning from one another. Churches believe that their ministries are what makes up the body of Christ. When in reality, they don't because they don't even know their own family or community. Also, you will see the gifts are represented in this scripture. And your gift is unique to you. And that gift is to be shared with others as well as others sharing their spiritual gift. Therefore, they work together and are not separated. Let's look at the definition of family, which is primarily social group, parents, and children. So what do we do about this? Well, simply be more interactive in the church, helping others, using your gifts, which a lot of churches teach but don't apply unless they follow certain rules. Be interactive. That's what this scripture is saying. Not one part is greater or over the other like the pastor being over the church is similar to saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 15 would it seem right for the foot to cry I am not a hand so I couldn't be part of this body even if it did it wouldn't be any less joined to the body you see everyone works together like clockwork not one is out of sync so I hope this helps clarify what a community is in the church. And this concludes season two of What's the Church series. And if you disagree with anything or agree with anything in the series, put a comment below. And never forget, Animated Christians is just for you.